The following podcast is intended for mature audiences. If you enjoy our work, please like, comment, subscribe, and follow the links in the description. Thanks for your support, and enjoy. In the not-too-distant future, just as soon as this song is done, EJ Chucky and his robot pal will tell you a tale of fun. They watched a reboot of a special show. If you recognize the song, then you surely know about a guy and some robots who can't shut up while you're trying to watch a movie on the satellite of love. I kind of killed it on that one. They watched a shitty movie, (laughs) except it weren't that bad. The man and his bots made silly jokes to keep you from being sad. We were worried the new version of the show would lack the timing and punch. No, no, no. (laughs) Did we enjoy it? Would you like to know? Stay tuned and you'll have a hunch. Robot Roll Call, the boy! Hello. That's all we got. Yep. That's the robot. (laughs) It took me so long. I wanted from the first moment to do the na na na. It took me so long to be able to do it without immediately cracking into fucking pieces. Dude, uh, that was harder than the Spongebob song for me, which was notoriously one of our highest and lowest moments of comedy simultaneously. Oh, (sighs) so, Mystery Science Theater 3000, the Netflix reboot. Wait, hold on a second. Greetings and salutations, listener. We still love you. We just do funny theme songs. I am Eric J. Chucky. This is the boy. Hey. Mystery Science Theater 3000, the Netflix reboot. Good! Thank you for joining us. <laughs> Look, it's just... I'm not going to bury the fucking lead, okay? It well, was good. It I'll was be, fun. I'll, I'll be perfectly honest with you. Like, I had to do some rewrites in those stupid song lyrics because I almost was like, well, no, that's the entire podcast right there. <laughs> um, it, the, the start, if you're watching it, if you sit down to watch it, you turn it on, you see the bit with Will Wheaton and whoever that lady was. Um, they might show up later in the series, but, like, tough through it. Yeah, it's stupid. It's not, like, horrible, but, like, if you're thinking that's the comedy you're getting from here on out, it isn't. No, just, it's like, like every episode of Mystery Science Theater 3000, you just wait for them to sit their ass down in the silhouette theater, and that's the show you're there to watch. Um, God, it's gonna be difficult to, uh, to drag this out a little bit. Um, for those of you who didn't know, uh, yes, Mystery Science Theater 3000 is back um, on Netflix. 13 episodes, I do believe, uh, starring Joel... No, not Joel. Joe something. Jonah? Um, I'll look it up. G- Jimbo. Move on. A man in a yellow uh, onesie. And um, a new cast of voices for the robots. Uh, our, our villainess is portrayed by Felicia Day. She is the daughter of Pearl. No. She is the daughter of the original or, two, yeah. of one of of the original professor. Pearl, I believe, was that guy's sister. Or mom? I think it was his mom. I was, I was a little doing, vague on the lore. I was doing some reading on this. Apparently there was a time paradox. I didn't know the lore of Mystery Science Theater 3000, the show where a man and two puppets sit in front of a bad movie and make a funny haha at the bad movie was so goddamn motherfucking deep. All right, people have died and come back, okay? This is the Game of Thrones of fucking review shows. And you know, I say that, and yet I've watched Linkara, so no. It's not the Game of Thrones or review shows. This is a pretty easy to follow plot line. Hey, hey, hey. Linkara is the Power Rangers of review shows. Let's be clear. It's not that bad. It's the Star Trek movies of TV. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. But, um... Uh, but yeah, she's portrayed by Felicia Day, and she's got um, uh, TV's son of TV's Frank. Is that yeah, how it TV's goes? Yeah, TV's son of TV's Frank. Patton Oswalt's a treasure. He's a treasure. I was kind of <laughs> I was kind of off put by that at first, but then I remembered that he did the uh, Comedy Central bumpers for MST3K back in the day. Not because I was watching it back then. Boy, actually introduced me to this, um, as well as the internet, I guess. But we'll give Boy the credit because he's a good robot. Beep boop. And uh, I have a, a YouTube channel I watch of 90s commercials, and they have a Comedy Central block. And I was like, oh, okay. <clears throat> that's, that's a good callback. They did uh, commercial bumpers in this show as though we're being broadcast somewhere with actual commercials. 
I love that they kept the commercial breaks. It actually is important for the show's pacing, you know? Well, and even if you saw it, you know, taped or whatever, that shit was on there. Yep, and that's great. Yeah. Circulate the tapes. That's where that shit came from, man. It's good shit. Um, God, you know, we got a lot of podcasts to get through. I was hoping the song would eat up more space than that. <laughs> like, you know how long it takes to sing that entry song? I, so, the easiest way to fill up time here would be to compare it to the original series. Now, if the title has brought anyone in who is an MST3K purist, prepare to fight me on the internet. Joel was never funny. I also did not like him. I think I had seen, like, an episode of the show before Boy really got me into it, and I think it was still the boy who showed it to me. Um, or I had looked it up because of his influence. And, uh... It was it was a Joel episode, and it was mm -mm. basically yeah. Mm -mm. Like I be mad all you want. It's Joel. Uh, I believe his actual name is Robinson. Is a really good comedic writer. He's a he's one of the writers on this sh on this reboot. Uh, he's he has shit comedic timing. It's just shitty, and he's very very dry, but not in a good way. Like, this show needs you to be a little more punchy. Yeah, I mean, pretty much. I'm, I'm looking up a cast list here, because... Like, the, there's, no, there's nothing on IMDb. That's why, I've been st that's why I've been not participating. Hodgson is his last name. No, no, that's the character's name. Oh, no, that's writer. Joe oh, Hodgson. no, Robinson is the character's name. I had them reversed. Regardless. Uh, Mike Nelson, yes, good. We liked the Mike Nelson. Like... There was a couple and of I think Joel was a writer great. on the whole series, but like I, he's just not got very good comedic timing. He's a great writer, you can tell by the jokes being good. He's not the best at delivery. I'm saying that because the easiest way, like I said, is to compare to the previous series. And like I don't have much to compare to with the um Joel years because I didn't watch them because I didn't find them amusing. But Paul Chaplin is the current writer, been writing it since 91. Really? I thought Joel was still on there. No, he wrote from 88 to 93. Hmm. Um, yeah, but... We're learning together. Well, because it's just a thing that we... Because we watched a bunch of MST3K over a couple of years ago. We, we crawled through a bunch of what are considered the best episodes. That was what was while, on the... Yeah, while playing World of Warcraft. It, it was hard not to play World of Warcraft while watching this. Um, yeah, like, it felt like I needed to be doing something. Jonah Ray is the guy's name. It was a J name, Jonah. Yeah, Jonah Ray. Uh, he's Jonah Heston on the show. And he's been in basically nothing I've ever seen before this. Um, a couple of things I'd seen, but, like, not... Well, like, oh, that guy! And The his... guy from Saul and the Mole Man was what Boy reminded me with, and I was like, oh, yeah, okay. Which is, I haven't seen Saul and the Mole Man, but I know that's a <laughs> thing. I've seen commercials for it. It wasn't good. No. Um, the new crow is... The new crow's fine. The new Tom Servo's a little lacking. The new crow is a little... His voice is a little... Stringy is the easiest way to explain it. But it's, it's close. It's fine. It's fine. Yeah, it's fine. The new Tom Servo's... His voice is too high. The delivery is fine. His voice is too high. But his voice is just... It's not, it's not Tom Servo. But that guy's got such a unique voice. That's kind of hard to duplicate. Well, yeah, because Kevin Murphy was Tom Servo for the majority of the show's run, it looks like. Uh, there was a first guy. There was one guy in seasons like looks like season one, maybe, and then it was the same guy until now. So, I mean, he's Tom Servo. It's like replacing the Joker's voice. You shouldn't do it. You just shouldn't do it. Like if if Mark's available, you get Mark. Yeah. If Kevin Conroy's available to play Batman, and he is, <laughs> um, I will always be Batman. You get. Kevin fucking Conroy. You get the voice of Batman if he's available. <clears throat> and while Tom Servo isn't quite the cultural icon that Batman the Animated Series is, it's a very distinct voice. Now, we're nitpicking, obviously. I mean, yeah, this, you know, <clears throat> to fill time. But uh, I think the best part of this was that the movie they reviewed wasn't that bad. Like, it wasn't incomprehensible. It was bad. But it wasn't salad. It wasn't absolute nonsense, like like a lot of the movies they covered back in the day yeah. were. 
I liked the first half of it. The second half was like got really dry and boring. Well, the first half was like a fun science thing, and the yeah, second with half like was, sexy ladies and parties. <laughs> the second half was like it became a war movie. Yeah, I know it was dumb. And like a bad war movie. But uh, the but jokes. they did end up roofing the monster, and I'm pretty happy. Yeah, about that, that. I was. <laughs> Twas roofies killed the savage beast. <laughs> Oh. Sorry, original King Kong. That's going to be Jack Black's line from now on. Lots of things are Jack Black's line. Um, it looks like it got a really positive reception. Yeah, that's what I've been seeing when I was looking up pictures for the thumbnail, which I did before the show. Um, which is going to make me sad if we divert and start talking about fucking pictures of Spider-Man again and I have to redo it because there goes my five minutes of work. <laughs> <laughs> I just it's such a simple joy of a show it's just listening to people snark at movies you're not invested in because there is no torture quite as acute aside of course actual torture as hearing some asshole snark at a movie that you are trying to be invested in well and I think part of the benefit of what they do is they, they don't really talk over the movie much they talk I mean, around the movie. I mean, they do sometimes, but, like, they usually use little moments of silence to, like, mm-hmm. add in a little little comedic undertrack. Which is why, um, if any of the listener follow me on Facebook, you know I put all the movies I watch on Facebook. MST3K movies aren't going on there. Because the movie isn't what I'm there for. The I'm- movie is the... The movie is the tool with which the people I am there to see create their craft. I'm there for both. I'm the kind of person who likes shitty movies. If it were me in this experiment, I would just quietly sit and enjoy the movie. And I don't think that's what... Uh, well, that's not what That's not what any of the foresters they, ever they'd wanted. They'd monitor my mind and they'd just be like, he just likes it. He just, he's he's just, just has really bad taste. He's he just, just has yeah. really bad taste in movies. <laughs> um, also, I, from, what I've, from what we've seen, the later episodes have some newer fare, like from the 80s even. Ooh. So, I mean, it might be a different... Oh my god, what if they did Hard to Kill? <laughs> well, actually, I mean, Rift Tracks has done that. And yeah, but that's not the it's same. The, it's the same actors. But it's not the same. They're so... They're so much more negative. Yeah, it, it's it's that 2000s, you know, uh, that website with spectacles uh, kind of mentality. <laughs> <laughs> it's not even called that anymore, they move. But, uh... That's just like, I don't know, man, shut up. Be Could nice. you maybe enjoy stuff? Yeah. Whereas there's an air of fondness in MST3K that you can tell they don't hate the movie. They're just having a good time. And I, I like how, um, and I want to be clear here because I said this about the, the New Turtles movies. This is MST3K in 2017, but not as strongly as the New Turtles movies were the New Turtles movies in 20. Uh, Whenever they came out. 1X. 21X. In the year 2000X. <laughs> um, yeah, because the jokes, because they always did pop culture jokes mm-hmm. and like movie reference jokes, and mm-hmm. the movie reference jokes were to like fucking really old 70s movies that like... Were everybody the, knew at the time. Everybody knew at the time and would be the thing that people in that of that age bracket reference. Now it's movies from the mid-2000s or 90s that they reference, and they make jokes about like... Tweeting shit. And yeah. now, again, if there are any MST3K like diehards listening to this podcast before they go watch the show for them damn selves for some reason, that that's a lot better than it sounds. Because it sounds like that could be really shitty and hokey. It's not. It works in just as well as the other jokes. Yeah, it's just using the culture that's around you to make jokes. I appreciated they slid in a couple of references to somewhat obscure nerd errata. Like, Although I don't know if I can say that anymore because you mentioned they made a joke uh, that was a reference to Order of the Stick. Like, I believe it was, yeah. It was a specific line that, like, is either a reference to Order of the Stick or Order of the Stick and it are referencing the same thing, and I don't know what that thing is. Well, even to that extent, I mean, I'm not even sure if I can call that, like, you know, esoterica within the nerddom because... 
Uh, uh, you know what? Dungeons. No, I am wrong. It oh, is okay. both. It is a reference to a movie that I have never seen. Um, from oh. Blazing Saddles. It's just a reference I didn't recognize from Blazing Saddles. Well, regardless, they they referenced because uh, I've seen that. I just don't remember this. <clears throat> um, Order of the Stick in uh, Dark Dungeons, and that was that was right on the nose. They they fought the Lich Zycon. No, oh, yeah, so. there we go. But um, it's just it's the, the the very quiet nerd references that some of them because that one I was wrong about. There were some, however, that were fairly deep craft. Oh, there were a couple that like I laughed my ass off at, and you didn't get. And I don't remember what they were, but it was just like it's beautiful that at different turns and vice versa at different turns they hit each of us with like nerd rays, but like. <laughs> Even they though- were so, and we've lived together for almost a decade, and we experienced a lot of the same things, and we like a lot of the same things, and they still managed to fucking craft those nerd rays specifically enough that it only hit one of us. Yeah, yeah, exactly the point I was trying to drive at. Thank you for making it cogent. Um, and was- the skits were good too. They did a little song. They did a little song that started off amusing and then got funnier and then got really funny. <laughs> there was a point where they're. He's like, they're singing a song about monsters and how every nation has its own monster. And they're putting up these actually really cool, like... Really well done. Wood or like, cardboard or like, something. Like, looks like probably particle board cutouts with sure. drawings on them. Um, and they were actually really neat. Like, I'd, I'd love to have a set of those. Uh, and um, singing a song, well, like, late in the song, he knocks a bunch over and... He looks at the camera like, are we going with this? Are we? <laughs> and they just keep going, so he fucking sets it back. He sets it back up and, like, continues the song, and it just becomes a fun bit. Yeah. Um, they don't take too awfully long setting up the show, which I appreciate. Well, because, I mean, they don't, you know what you're fucking here for. Right. Uh, but they do, t- you know, take a hot minute to set it up for anybody who's new. Um, and... Uh, they, there are a couple different things. Gypsy comes down from the ceiling now. Which they they provided... For some reason, they provided in-character justification for. Like, in-universe. Which I always thought was neat. Um, yeah. I like... It's, they didn't need to. No. This is MST3K. She could have just come down from the ceiling. Um, Tom Servo can fly now, but only in the theater. So occasionally he will float up and do bits where he, like, pokes at something on the screen. Yeah. Which I think is a fun inclusion. Um, I might be high, but I think Crow's arms are way bigger now. I didn't notice. Um, just tiny minor changes, but I like them. Yeah. It makes it, it helps to differentiate it and make it feel like it's a continuation of the series rather than just, hey everyone, member, member MST3K? <laughs> it's back in pog form. Um, My wife tells me pogs are coming back, so pogs are back in pog form. <laughs> I want I want that to be true so hard. I want pogs to be back in pog form, and then I want a pog that has a picture of a pog on it. I want a pog that has a picture of a pog that has a picture of Alf on it. <laughs> no, I want a pog that has a picture of a pog that has a picture of Millhouse holding the pog with Alf on it. That's what I want. <laughs> that would be delicious. The juice pies that are delicious. <laughs> Oh my oh. god! Listener, were you around for that? I don't remember. It's okay. You'll figure it out when you're. Or you won't. <sighs> um, pogs distracted the fuck out of me. Don't they always? I I had a really good time with this. I was a little worried at first because I, you know, the opening sequence is genuinely a little cringy. It is. It's not good. I'm not going to say that. I think they went. I think they hit the exact mark they went for. Sure. Um, I, I've said this of trolls on the internet before, though. If all you're trying to do is trick me into thinking you're an asshole, you've succeeded. Um, there is a mildly politically incorrect version of that, which, which is troll trolls by prote- by like doing his thing. Someone points out well, how what he's saying is an idiotic statement, and then responds with, he goes, "Lol, I was trolling you." Ha ha ha, I was only pretending to be retarded. <laughs> <laughs> We're allowed to say retarded on this show. Oh, we are? Neat. Yeah. I mean, you know, maybe don't say it too much. Not I'm not going to go full on Michael Richardson. It's no, fine. no, 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 no. I, I just, uh, <laughs> not like that. Just, 
there are other words. <laughs> Let's try to use new words. Well, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's just because I get bored of the same words get, over and Let's not get a catchphrase. We've already got, like, three of them, and I think that's enough. So I can't I can't work in my, my Tyler no likey? No. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> I think it has legs, is all, man. Like, that started out as, like, a fun, quote-unquote, fun bit that Brandy and I would do. And, and like, it very quickly became, I'm really just tired of hearing no likey. <laughs> <laughs> so my, you do not get a catchphrase, went from fucking just like, ha 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 ha, we both watched that show together, to, I can stop it. <laughs> Which, I think, is ultimately the point of Tyler no likey. Yeah, that's around when you started picking up the phrase, so I, I'm sure I, this is not news to you. Uh, no, <laughs> no, sir. <laughs> No, it is not. Um, I'm looking forward to watching the rest of this. I don't know when I do want to watch it, because obviously I want to watch it with my good friend the boy. Um, and I'd also like to watch it while doing something. So, it's a very sm- small then diagram. Yeah, well, but, I mean, so long as they don't take it off Netflix and delete it from the internet, I mean, it's not like there's a rush. It took us a long time to get through that collection of MST3K before. Yes. I think it's important to space out episodes of MST3K. If you watch them marathon style, about the third episode in, and I like this show, you get you start to get the, will you fuckers please stop trying to be funny over this movie. Every now and then, like, and let me be clear here, because not every joke they make during the movie lands. Well, no, but that's... But that's, yeah, that's to your individual sense of humor. I mean, you might find something hilarious that I didn't care for, and vice versa. In the same way that, like, they hit us with those very compact nerd lasers, a bunch of those shots weren't aimed at us, man. Sure, sure, sure. Um, so, you know, don't go in expecting this to be the best episode of MST3K distilled from older episodes to make some kind of super episode that gets really big and attacks... Some sort of city. Angel Grove. Angel, yeah, fucking Angel Grove. And then Linkara joins the cast of MST3K, and they, they talk over the footage. Yeah, well, I think he's done some stuff with Rift Tracks. That, doesn't, that wouldn't make not yeah, sense. Yeah, you know, he has, I think. Um, I could be wrong. I got eight minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, we're not... I mean... Like we right, usually, I let me put, let me put the this. fourth the fourth wall of this podcast is pretty thin and papery. But <laughs> come on, man, don't don't just be like we're trying to fill time. Well, here's the thing. Here's the thing, and, and I've that's that's one of the, the jokes we do here on the Show Notes podcast. I don't know if you've noticed. Other shows like to do the and that's all, folks. Joke where they actually put up the end credits. Too much editing for me. I just I just break the fourth wall. <laughs> um, Maybe that's why Deadpool does it. Maybe he's just lazy. Maybe. Uh... <laughs> But I remember back in the early times of Game Grumps, Aaron, like, tried to keep the circumstances around them sacrosanct. They did not talk about how they timed each episode. They, I don't know what the fuck sorcery, what veil he was trying to create, what masquerade he was perpetrating. But, like, they were reduced to pretending Susie was a goose when she walked in the room and startled John once. (laughs) <laughs> I think it's partially to preserve the air of it just being two guys enjoying a good time and having a conversation. Well, I mean, it still is. They're just also recording it because how do you think it got on the internet, dummy? Secret microphones in their room. Aye. aye. But, and a uh, secret connection to their console as, for as, the gaming footage. As time went on and Danny didn't care. Uh, and they just now, now they're just sort of like, hey, hey, someone's looking at us through the window. Come on in here through that window. And Barry comes in and he's like, hey, it's me, Barry. That's fun. The people like that. The people like to know what goes on. It makes them happy. Ultimo Dragon, comment. Talk to your friend John Cena. Tell him to comment. Yeah. Shit, I'd be all right if John Cena comment on my video. John Cena, all right, open invitation. My man, you ever want to be on the podcast, you're welcome. Anytime. Yeah. I mean, you're busy, because we do this on Monday nights, but... <laughs> no, he ain't busy. I mean, he's still busy. He's probably still back to his age, like, being John Cena. He's he filming movies. That's true. That's true. Which means he's in California, and that's not where he is. No. But if you ever get some free time, you want to come on the podcast, you are welcome anytime. Yeah, my seat is fine. 
That's rough, though. For I mean, more reasons talking about shows better than ours. This was a really great idea, and I just think MST3K, the first episode, was so good. Like, Well, I think it's actually our earned desire to not do the Guardians of the Galaxy podcast ever again. Yes, that was... Oh, uh, I do have something relevant to talk about. I liked the Team Skull drones that played the music and did the things. Yeah. I liked how they had, like, headpieces that resembled her hair sticks. Yes. That was good. I appreciated that. I I like the general design of her minions. I love that TV son of TV's Frank, and that's what I'm going to call him forever, um, has TV's Frank's hair. Yes. That's good. That's good. It's delightful. Um, I'm looking forward to uh, Bobo and Brain Guy making a return. Yeah, I saw that there was Bobo, (laughs) Brain Guy, and some version of Pearl showing up. I thought she was in the opening sequence. She was. Okay. She was in the opening sequence but not in the opening, like, bit. No, 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 no. So I want to, I want her to show up and, like, take over the satellite of love for an episode. Just, because that, that's my era of MSD3K, you know? Well, and, and, I mean, mine by association, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's just, because I, the Foresters, the Dr. Forrester and TV's Frank, I, were mostly a Joel thing. I love those characters. Because the rest of the show was still good, even if Joel wasn't. <laughs> uh, I, I don't think the robots really hit their stride until later, too. But later in his run. Sure. Um, I, I will agree with that entirely. But yeah, yeah. no, I love Dr. Forrester and TV's Frank. They were great. I wish I could see them partnered up with Mike. I think there was like a little overlap there. Um, but I just... Like, I grew up on the Pearl episodes. That's what, that's what was getting played in Comedy Central with the fucking Patton Oswalt bumpers when, mm-hmm. when I was a kid. So I'm excited to see them back, and I, I'm excited to see if that see if the new actors are doing good with them. I think it's the same actors. Really? Yeah, they're just doing guest bits. Oh, look at your little eyes shine. <laughs> your little your little artificial eyes. Beep boop, man. <laughs> I know Pearl's the same person. I know that for a 100 percent fact. Really? She did not look like the same person. I'm almost... Po- you know what? Yeah, Probably can- talking out my ass. Let's look it up on the internet that we're on. Go to the Google machine. To the google a see Episodes. This is riveting. Hey, yeah. Just both of us Googling a thing. Well, you know what? I tell you what, though. Yeah, Mary Jo Pell. Holy yep. shit. She looks way different. Listener, next month is uh, is our anniversary month for realsies this time. Yeah, we're not dumb anymore. We figured it out, and it's it's getting we're getting ready. We're getting ready. Um, we have, not counting wrestling, two podcasts like ideated and ready to sit down and be talked about. Which, if you've paid attention to anything about this podcast and the general um, rushed nature of its topics, is I mean wonderful for well, us. And, and I say that, and one of them's oddly MST three K like. It is. Ooh, a teaser. Ooh, you've been teased. Ooh, is this foreshadowing? I'm going to say it was. It's my version of foreshadowing where I set up, like, really fucking good foreshadowing and don't realize that I've done that. It's a real thing I've done. Um, he does it a lot in books he's written. Hey, the Colt Regan series, you can buy them on Amazon. Um, you can buy them uh, on Amazon. Is there anywhere else? ColtRegan.com? Is that still a thing? Fine booksellers. Uh, it's, yeah. it's dot net, high, dot net, but... If you Google Colt Regan and ignore the YouTube video result that shows up, you'll find all kinds of quality products. Or just check the link in the description. Yeah, or that, that is the cheapest way to buy the books that gets me the most money. So there you go. Use that. They're really good. Um, he does it a lot in those books where like, you'll get really good foreshadowing. I promise you, listener, he didn't do any of that on purpose. Nope. <laughs> His subconscious brain is really good at foreshadowing. I, I'm like an idiot savant of writing. And of so many, many other things. And you just called me an idiot. But I also implied that you're good at many things. It's a Laird. Laird situation. Peter Laird? <laughs> I have nothing. I have nothing. You win that. Re- you win it. Success. I had no, I had no response. Um, but no, I think this is a good idea. Um, and, and to give the listener an even better, you know, um, encapsulation... Of the <clears throat> rambly, scrambly bullshit nature of this podcast, uh, this specific episode, the rest of them are solid gold. Go listen. Um, 
this was a fantastic idea because I thought the show was going to be shit. Well, not as good. Um, and, you know, there was a lot of, eh, surrounding it. Was Where? this really going to be successful? I didn't think it was going to be shit, but I didn't think I'd like it as much. I genuinely thought that the nostalgia backlash would catch me and I wouldn't be able to fully embrace the show. Well, and it's not even nostalgia for no, me. No, but for me. Sure. Well, no, I didn't mean it that way. I mean, like, this is just... It's not so much like nostalgia. It's just like, oh, they released another season. That took an awful long time, but yeah. here it is, still the same it's, show. It's just, it's just a good, ep- it's just a good episode of MST3K. Yeah. Now it remains to be seen if the rest of the episodes of this season will be good, but at least the first one is just a good episode of MST3K. And hey, if you manage to crap out a good pilot, you you got a lot of raw material to work with, and you you earn yourself a lot of um, goodwill. Yeah, goodwill. So. Congratulations, current MST3K cast and production crew. These two nerds liked the thing you put on the Netflix Atron. Great work. Well, everything's better when nerds talk about it. Fuck it, let's go hardcore!